I'm a lover, not a writer, but I never tell you guys on me. Chocolate Geisha back for another video. So thank you for tuning in and to everyone who's new here Welcome, I'm glad to have you all and uh, today we've got a really fun interesting video So thank you for tuning in initially. I wanted to make a video about like unspoken rules in Japan but I decided that I should do like a do don't list because it's kind of what it became So that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. Um, all right, let's get into it. Do bow at greeting. Bowing in Japan is like giving a handshake. It's the proper way to greet someone. There are different degrees of bowing. Sometimes it's like 45, sometimes it's like 30-ish. It really depends on who you're bowing to and their status. But bow when greeting. Don't stare at them when you bow. Okay, I learned this like kind of the hard way. Looking at someone when you bow is like shaking hands with the same hand. It's like the same level of awkwardness. So just do yourself a favor and look down or close your eyes when you bow at someone and you'll be set. Do accept things with both hands. If someone offers you like a business card or a present or anything really, try and accept it with both hands. Like grab it with your thumbs, like accept it with both hands and that's considered the most polite. Don't put your hands in your pockets. Okay, it's considered kind of rude to put your hands in your pockets, especially if you're in a professional setting. So if you don't know what to do, clasp your hands and put them in front of you, or clasp your hands and put them behind you, um, but don't like put them in your pockets because that's like a no-no. Next, do use appropriate honorifics. Japan is pretty unique in the sense that they have um, like little attachments that you add to someone's name. Um, there's san. San is like the perfect one to add to like anything. If you don't know what to add, add san and you'll be set. Um, there's also like senpai. If someone is like in the same job and same position, but they are they've been there longer than you or they know more than you, you call them senpai. If someone is like your teacher or a doctor or someone who like has done a lot of school and they really know their stuff, you call them sensei. If they're like a kid or someone that you're really close to, you call them chan. Don't not use an honorific. Um, you should pick one. Uh, don't just not include one altogether. That's considered even more rude than adding the wrong one. So try and add one if you can. Next is do give gifts when you're traveling. There's something called omiyage, which translates to a souvenir. Especially if you're coming from a foreign country to Japan, try and bring something that is very reminiscent of your home country. And if you can, try and get something edible. Um, try and bring like a little snack or like a sweet or something salty um, that is reminiscent of your home. Next is don't single anyone out. Don't make anyone stand out if they really don't have to. For example, I made a big mistake once. I was trying to give omiyage, but I was giving it to only the people from my school, but there were other teachers there, so it was a little bit awkward. And that is like a social faux pas. So give it to them when you guys have like a moment together and there's no one else around. Do downplay compliments. This is a unique one. In the West, if you get a compliment, you usually say, thank you. But in Japan, it's more polite to kind of like redirect that compliment and like give them a compliment instead. I don't know why, but I just think of like Zuko like lightning bending. That's exactly what you're doing with the compliment. Your Japanese is so good. Uh, your English is better. <laughs> That's exactly how you should handle it. Try, if you can, try and deflect the comment. Or like, if you don't have anything else to say, you can't think of anything else, then just say like, oh, no, 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 not a... Next, don't reject food or gifts. If someone gives you food or a gift, Try to accept it if you can. If you've got like an allergy or you really don't like it or anything, still try to accept it if you can and just say thank you. Most people are pretty considerate and if you have like a significant issue with something, most people already know and the, most people will account for that. But if you can, try to accept it with both hands of course and just say thank you. Next, 
do show legs and thighs. That's something that is kind of like opposite in the West. In the winter time, right, people will be dressed to the nines. Like people will have a huge coat, they'll have a hat, they'll have like high socks, huge boots, and shorts. I'll be sitting there like, are you hot or are you cold? Like, I don't know. But um, it's considered totally normal here, so don't be shook. <laughs> People do that all the time. Don't show your chest, shoulders, or arms. That's something that is also a little backwards here. It's considered kind of sexual, so try not to if you can. Summertime is a bit of an exception, but on most occasions, especially in professional settings, try not to show your arms and chest and shoulders if you can. A good way to tell if you're showing too much is if you can see like your collarbones. My collarbones are pretty prominent, so I can like easily tell. If you're showing your collarbones, you're showing too much. <laughs> um, okay, next. Do walk on the left. In Japan, the roads are on the left and people walk on the left. So if you're like in that situation where like you're with someone and you're like both going the same way but you're both trying to pass the opposite direction, just go left. Just, just trust me on this one. Go left and you'll, I promise you'll be set. Next, don't be loud in public. Japanese people tend to be very like quiet. If you're on public transportation, try and keep it to a minimum. Don't use loud music. Try not to chat to your friends if you can. Next, do use cash. Cash, this is a very cash-based society. Try and carry all the money that you would potentially need that day with you on hand because it is a very cash-based society. Don't use credit cards or checks. Credit cards are kind of rare. A lot of people don't use them. People don't use checks at all, so don't use checks at all. Next, do pour drinks for others. Japanese people love to drink. People here drink a ton, and if you're in especially a professional setting, you'll want to pour drinks, especially for your higher ups. Don't pour your own drink. Don't do it. It's like a social faux pas. Don't do it. Um, people here, um, there's there's like a little like urban legend that if you pour your own drink, you won't get promoted or you're kind of like shooting yourself in the foot. Don't ask me why, it's just a thing they do. Do be indirect. If you've got a problem with someone or there's something that bothers you, um, try your best to kind of beat around the bush. Yes, beat around the bush a lot, in fact. If you can, just like dance around the topic but don't like actually say how you feel about it. Like try and just like suggest what you think. Next, don't click your tongue. Don't click your tongue. And by click your tongue, I mean like, so like, um, I don't know. Oh my God, he's so crazy. Don't, don't do that. Because in Japan, in Japan, that's like frightened words. Like when you click your tongue, that means that someone's annoyed. If you hear someone in Japan click their tongue, it's going down. It's going down real soon, I assure you. I'm guilty of this too. It's really hard because I grew up doing it and it didn't really mean anything. I'm getting a lot better at noticing when I do it and try your best not to if you can. Do carry around hand towels. Hand towels, handkerchiefs, any kind of cloth that you use for different purposes, try and carry that around. Just just carry it around. Um, in a lot of stores, like you can get them at like a 100 yen store or a lot, you can get like really nice ones at more uh, high-end stores just carry around a handkerchief with you it's considered the norm here don't be surprised if there's no soap if you just get out of the bathroom and you're looking for soap don't look too hard it's probably not there <laughs> do wear face masks and eye patches. So in Japan, people wear face masks when they're sick to prevent you know, the spreading of germs and eye patches if you have like pink eye or something going on and you just don't want to. So one time I was bitten on the eyelid, the eyelid by a mosquito. I know, it's as terrible as it sounds. And my eye like blew up, like I look like a freaking Quasimodo. Like I had a blown up eye and I wore an eye patch and it's considered totally normal. Like people will ask you like, oh, what happened? But people like, most people will make a big deal out of it. Next, 
Don't be shaken if people cough without covering anything. Um, people, even on public transportation, a lot of people cough into the air and it's really weird, but they do. So just don't be like, oh my God, it's so unsanitary because people do it a lot here. Um, so don't be surprised, just play it cool. Don't say bless you or look for an equivalent. If someone sneezes or something, I'm the kind of person that likes to say bless you, but they don't do that here at all. So don't say bless you. And even in some of my English classes where you know we study Western culture, if you say bless you, they'll just look at you like you're crazy. So try not to say bless you. Just act like they didn't do anything. That's the best way to play it off. Next, do use proper meal etiquette. And by meal etiquette, I mean saying itadakimasu before you eat and saying gochisousama deshita after you're done. If you want, you can just say gochisousama. It translates to, I accept this dish. Thank you for this dish. And also translates to, thank you for this meal. I enjoyed this meal. It literally means it was a feast. It's a very, it's a, it's a really nice phrase. I really like using itadakimasu and gochisousama deshita because it, it literally is, you know, it was a feast. You know, I really enjoyed this meal. And you know, technically it was a feast compared to what you had before, which was nothing. So um, try and use it if you can. A lot of Japanese people are like, oh, they're so, they're so culturally sensitive. Don't hold long eye contact. So in the West, when someone's talking to you, looking at them in the eye for extended periods of time is seen to be sincere. It's very earnest of you to look someone in the eye as they're talking to you. But in Japan, a little bit goes a long way. Try not to stare them like in the soul because it'll put people off. So try to just look at them and it, like, kind of like nod and like look away and like, oh, like kind of like you're thinking about what they're saying and then look back and then like kind of like nod and like oh okay. and then look back for a little bit like a couple seconds and then like ah oh, I see I see I see and then look at them again um don't stare at them the whole time because I promise they're nervous so try not to do be an active listener in the west when you go yeah yeah uh-huh yeah 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 it's like you're trying to cut them off right but in Japan it's it's considered nice to vocalize and a rule of thumb is to use a i u e o when you're talking to someone. Ah is like ah I see. Um, if you go e, it's like what? Like it's kind of like what? Like what? If you go ooh, then that's like oh I see. <laughs> Bear with me here, okay? If you go eh, it's like like what? He did what? He said what? Come again now. Um, and if you go, whoa, <laughs> it's like, whoa. So try and use those if you can. Next, don't say, o genki desu ka? O genki desu ka is only really used when you haven't seen someone in a really long time and you're just checking to see like, how is your spirit lately? Like it's, it's exactly as deep as it sounds. Like, so I'm sure you can tell that if you see someone every day, that's not the best thing to say. In Japan, you can start a conversation by talking about a common experience. Oh, that test was really hard, wasn't it? Or you can talk about the weather. There are different conversation starters, but if you can, try not to use o genki desu ka. Next, do take off your shoes when you go inside. In Japan, there's a very strong like inside-outside culture. There's a lot, even for the bathroom, sometimes there's different shoes. A boundary between what's clean and what's considered dirty. In my school, I have two pairs of shoes, one for inside, one for outside, and one for the gym. That's three. But yes, bring extra shoes. Choose for inside too. Next is specifically for teachers. Don't be surprised if people are a little more physical um, with students and things. Here in Japan, people are a lot more physical with their students than I thought. And not like in a perverted way, of course not, but more so in like casual touch. For example, if someone is standing up and giving a presentation, the teacher might like go and put their hand on the student's back to like support them as they give their presentation. Another example is if a student is sleeping in class, a teacher might roll up a newspaper and like whack them on the head one time to wake them up. And I, when I first saw this, I was like, he just touched the student. 
student, everyone's just like, ah, this is normal. So don't, just play it off, play it off. Also, if there's a bad student too, especially in a lot of lower levels where the kids are still like toddler aged, the teachers will grab the student by the arm and not verbally, but literally drag the student out of the door. Like it's, I was so taken aback when I first saw this. I was like, oh my god. I was like, this is weird, but it's not weird. I promise it's not weird, it's very normal. Next, do accept invitations to places. In Japan, there's a lot of like outside work, outside school unions that they have. And when people invite you, it's them trying to let you into their in-group, so if you can, attend and a little bit goes a long way just go there even if you're not there for the whole time just going and being in attendance is a great way to make bonds and really lasting relationships last but certainly not least don't be surprised if everyone is in everybody's business i'm still working on this one because it's so different in the west if someone's going through something personal a lot of people don't overstep their boundaries and people just kind of let that person deal with it but if there's something going on a lot of people input themselves into it people here make it their business try not to take it personally like stay in your lane like don't have the attitude just try and just try and take it as like they care and they are just like concerned for you and they want to be active in your life there's so many things that you could potentially add to this list but I think this is sufficient. This is like the things that I wish someone had told me and hopefully when you come to Japan, you can use this list too. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, then like it. And if you wanna see more, then hit subscribe and become part of the YouTube fam. But thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye. I'm a buff baby, but I dance like a man. She a nice lady and she shaking her yak. Spent the whole summer trapping out the sedan. Marching with the bands, cause I think that I can.